Hello and welcome to Nick's Allotment Diary. Today I'd like to talk to you about weed killer contamination. A couple of weeks ago I was watching a video by somebody called Charles Dowding. Uh, his channel's really good if you get a chance to check it out. Uh, I'll include a link in the description below this video. I'd also like to mention that Kelly of Kelly's Kitchen Garden also highlighted the problem in one of her videos. Now Charles in his video talked about the issue of weed killer contamination. He was talking about a problem with a weed killer called amino pyrolid and what that does is cause a problem with growth in various different types of plants uh, mainly uh, beans but also other types of plants and um, he was talking about the fact that this uh, weed killer mainly uh, comes in on uh, horse manure where horses have been fed on hay that's been sprayed with a particular weed killer. Uh, there's various different uh, names for the weed killer but the active ingredient is this amino pyrolid. And the main symptoms of the weed killer is a curling inwards of the leaves and uh, a yellowing. Basically the plant can't photosynthesize properly. Now earlier this year we had a delivery of horse manure to the allotments and at that point I was not aware of this particular problem and I've spread horse manure on this bed, the no dig bed here, this bed and this bed. So four beds got quite a lot of horse manure each. And I was planting out my tomatoes a week or so ago. You will have seen my uh, last video was planting out three tomato plants. And uh, that video was recorded a couple of weeks ago, but I uh, only put up in the last couple of days. And I noticed that the tomato plants have not been looking particularly healthy. They're looking as if they're struggling to grow. So I'll just take you in closely so you can have a look. So the leaves are looking sort of yellow and the veins are quite prominent and the leaf doesn't look very green. And if you look here, you see the leaves are starting to curve inwards. So my suspicion is that the horse manure that I put on my plot has some of this chemical weed killer in. I'll show you an example of a plant that I've only planted a few days ago. This one doesn't look as bad, but can you see how yellow the leaves are? And I'll show you a similar plant to this that is been growing in a bucket for few more weeks. So this is an example of exactly the same tomato plant as the one I've just shown you that's growing in just multi-purpose compost. So you can see the leaves are quite broad, they're green, not yellow, and the veins aren't prominent. So I think I'm pretty sure that the manure is contaminated. There is a diagnostic test that you can do to confirm whether the manure is affected. And what you do is take some soil from the suspected area or the suspected manure and test for it by putting in to that manure some uh, beans so basically any type of beans legumes are particularly affected by the weed killer you'll be able to see very quickly whether the seedlings uh, thrive or not 
So I've taken some compost from each of the four beds that the horse manure was added to. So I've put in two beans into each of the pots. And I've also, as a control, taken some soil from one of the beds that just has um, no manure added to it this year. And uh, I've planted two beans in that one as well. So hopefully we should be able to see, as soon as the beans germinate, within two to three weeks, should be able to tell whether, for definite, the soil has this weed killer in it. So the bed that I've planted my green beans into um, has not had any manure added to it this last year. Uh, it had my brassicas in over the winter so I wasn't able to add any manure to this bed. And beans and peas are one of the worst affected plants by this uh, weed killer. So basically legumes are affected particularly by it. Um, also the Solanum family, so potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, aubergines are affected particularly badly. The Asteraceae family are affected badly, so uh, lettuces are affected um, and also things like dahlias. So some ornamental plants are affected by it too. There are some plants that aren't affected as badly as others. So the Brassica family are not affected um, too badly, nor are the squashes. So pumpkins, uh, butternut squashes, the squash family basically aren't uh, affected as badly. Um, so now I've got a decision to make. The compost, the horse manure, is dug in to the beds. There is some on the surface here you can see that's not uh, completely incorporated in. So I've got to decide how to deal with it now. Practically, I think it will be very difficult for me to dig out all the beds that are affected and remove all the affected material. I might be able to do that maybe on one of the beds, but to do that on all four will be um, prohibitively expensive. I'll have to dispose of all the compost and the soil and then rebuild the soil back up. So um, I'm not sure that I'll be able to do that. I have looked into the persistence of this chemical. Um, I believe it is rendered eventually inactive by soil microbes, from what I've read, um, and that they need to be sort of with soil microbes for about a year. So um, digging over and incorporating the material and sort of encouraging breakdown in the soil might be the only alternative I'll have. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about doing is growing a lot more stuff in um, pots and luckily I haven't planted any potatoes in the ground this year. I've planted all my potatoes in buckets so um, that was uh, lucky whereas previously I've always planted one bed of potatoes. Uh, I had intended to grow squash in this bed anyway. Uh, this is the no dig bed. So this has got the manure below the surface underneath the cardboard. There's some cardboard there that's just uh, exposed. Um, so basically there's um, manure, cardboard, compost in this bed. And what I'm going to probably do with this one is to sink some buckets with my squash in uh, with my squash in multi-purpose compost in 
this bed and let them grow and hopefully the soil microbes will do the work of breaking down the chemical. Uh, in this bed I've already got brassicas. Now uh, they've been in only a week. Now the leaves are a little bit yellow but they were yellow before they went in so I'm not too worried about those. Um, and there's leeks in here. Now I'm not sure about the um, onion family. Whether they're particularly affected. I can't find anything specific about the onion family. Um, but we'll see. So I wanted to make this video to um, make you aware. So if you're getting horse manure and you're putting it on your plots to do your tests first put some seeds in some pots with the uh, manure and see how they develop. If they show any signs of curling of the leaves then you know that um, that compost is affected. Thanks very much for joining me at Nick's Allotment. I'll see you again next time. Thank you.